Hello, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello, Internet. It's Big Dave here. Executive Big Dave, High Overlord of the Frugal Mandate, and we are back with more Stellaris. So, if you remember from the last video, we had created, or we had started the creation of a wormhole generator so that we could begin to expand our empire even farther. You can see our green blob of influence ever expanding, bumping right up against our neighbors. We also had started a research project down here in the uh, Shorax system. Our uh, impeccable and our uh, four-star rated research scientist Paseca, captain of our only science ship, had uh, started the research and we are going to now continue that. So the game is moving along at a nice clip here. We have our first expansion. We have multiple second expansion potentials. Uh, right now we have a, a nice expanse of space. We are beginning to include within it systems that uh, were previously unreachable. Things are just moving right along. It's just a, it's a beautiful, beautiful time to be a member of the Zach Plot Mandate as you see our influence expanding here. Now we can get to a lot more stars as our wormhole generator completes its construction. All right, lovely, lovely, beautiful. All right, signs of battle. So Paseca finishing his or her research. Here we go. There's clear evidence that a massive space battle took place in close orbit of Shorax. Shorax La. Oh, Shorax La. Shorax is the uh, is the system. Shorax La is the planet. All right. Some point in the last five thousand years. Surface of one side of the moon is pockmarked with craters. Okay, the wrecked ships were all in poor condition. The fact that anything remains after all these, uh, after all the damage uh, they must have sustained, is a testament to their advanced design. Indeed, Science Officer Paseca, preparing an expedition, sift through these derelict hulls. I, th I think that is a good idea. So we will say uh, intriguing, or I or in the native tongue of the Frugalians, we will say. Mm. And uh, we will start the Mount Graveyard the Expedition research project. So here we go. Where is that? There it is. So we just need a science ship present with a scientist of three uh, skill or higher, which we have that in our all-star scientist, Paseca. Uh, so yeah, I think I think we're good to go. So uh, let's 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 hit that and let's uh, grab you. Where you going? Where you going? We need you to do this research project. There you go. All right, Shorexla is going to be thoroughly researched. We want to find out about these ancient aliens and their uh, impeccable ship design capabilities because uh, they design these ships that have somehow uh, weathered the storm for 5,000 years, even after a great battle. So that's of tremendous interest to us. Our construction ship. Let's get you to work. Not a lot to do here. Uh, this is a habitable planet. Uh, this could be one that we would want to eventually expand into. Uh, it looks like a, a, a dusty crap hole, just like every other planet that uh, we would natively be able to inhabit. So uh, yeah, it looks charming. looks great. So let's uh, let's consider that. But for now, let's actually just go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and tell our construction ship to build a research station. We'll go ahead and start to harvest that one engineering research that is available there. Anything else within our borders? Now, this is within our borders, but we can't actually jump to it. So I think the next thing our construction ship needs to do is come up here and build a wormhole generator. And now we will be able to get to even more of this space expanse. I'm hoping that we will push out maybe to include this mineral rich planet. Our borders still need to push quite a ways before we could jump in there. But if our jump capabilities extend out that far, that would be nice. We could start pre-planning for our next expansion. The first strike, oh, here's our special project completing. The team under Science Officer Paseca finished their expedition. Okay, the wrecked starships on the surface were too badly damaged to recover any useful technologies. That is too bad. They were clearly very advanced, however, we could gain valuable engineering insights if we analyze them. Okay, let's do it. This will give us uh, a planet which has three engineering research on it. Cool. And uh, yeah, Paseca is going to gain uh, 200 experience. Nice. The rich get richer as our best scientist gets even better. 
there we go. Now, speaking of our best scientist, uh, let's let's take a look at, at, at Paseca here. All right, uh, Paseca, okay. Hey, how you doing? You doing good? Good, good. Okay, so Paseca is 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 a, a great scientist, though 50 years old. I, I don't know exactly what the life expectancy for a Chamberlain is, but I can't imagine it's it's too far into the 70s. So uh, we may not have uh, Paseca around much longer, so it could actually be a good time to build a second science ship. We also have so many new targets for scientific research that it's going to be difficult for one science ship to keep up with it. Um, as I say that, I notice my science ship is currently sleeping. So let's uh, start a couple of system surveys here. And that will tide us over here. So we head to Rick's, we check out our spaceport, and we build ourselves a new science ship. So that science ship is going to allow us to explore at an increased rate. All right, so research station is complete, and he is headed off to do his business, his wormhole business, up here in Larbo. And that is exactly what we need from him right now. Uh, so let's, uh, let's head back over and check out our strike force. They are back up to full strength, which is uh, perfect. Perfect for what we want. Complete. That 185 is a, is just a nice uh, number for us. It is is it's 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 good enough to take on most of the enemies that we would bump into, but it is not an an overabundance of military force. You know we we got to manage the money, right? We don't want to tie up a bunch of money in a in a Corvette that we're not even going to use. You know if he he barely even fires his guns off in battle, it just looks bad, right? I, you don't want to put that money into something until you really have to. And in this case, I think we do, because this is going to push us up closer to 200, and it's going to make me a lot more comfortable about taking on all of the threats that will uh, probably going to be, or that we're probably going to be encountering here in the, uh, in the next several cycles. All right, so we will need to recruit a new scientist. Some ships can, uh, ships and colonies can function without leadership. Science ships, however, definitely need a scientist before they will work at all. So let's see what's on offer here. We have a, a hero who is uh, plus 10% to research speed. I like it. Just a straight research speed increase. Unfortunately, research is for the scientists uh, that are back here doing research projects and not for the scientists that I want out in the field. Oh, anomaly research speed plus 35%. That is great. Horst, you look great. Horst Bauman. Just the name has such weight. And uh, we have uh, research speed on particles plus 10%. So these two guys both specializing in different research fields, not going to help me as they captain one of my science ships out into the vastness of space. So we are going to take Horst Bauman. And uh, Horst is going to command our new science ship. What was it called? The uh, Persepio. Pros 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 Prospero. The Prosper... The the English language, man, it just ties my tongue every single time. So we created that ship so that we could begin to expand our, as we unpause here, we begin to expand our knowledge of this new space that became available when our wormhole generator went online. So let's start the survey. We're just kind of start here and move in a, in a counterclockwise motion and uh, that will probably probably intersect yes it will intersect uh with uh with our other research ships so that that works very nicely yeah so let's start here uh well let's start here actually yep and we'll just put a couple in uh, because if if they bump into an enemy then uh, it's going to cancel out future research that i've plotted so i don't want to do too many oh my goodness Pause. Where are you, science ship? The pirates. Oh, the pirates. Okay, so where are you currently located? Okay, that is a... What They have a space station. Oh, my... Look at this thing that... This massive hulk of a piece of crap that they've constructed for themselves. Okay. First strike force. You have a new mission. Our science ship must flee. Okay, and he will because he's on passive. He, he will because he's on passive? No? Um, retreat? Oh, he's in combat, so he can't. Okay. So he's going to retreat, and hopefully uh, Paseca, the, the national treasure, 
Paseca, known throughout the Frugal Mandate for uh, his or, or her scientific prowess, can't simply be destroyed by this hunk of crap that these pirates have constructed out of toothpicks and chewing gum here. Okay, so we're going to cross our fingers in the meantime. We have encountered another alien race, so let's just take a moment. Yes, in the uh, system here that is the, the Brachium system, we have encountered the Zeta aliens. Okay, proceed with caution. We will. Thank you for that report, but right now I have better things to do. I have more pressing matters like my lead scientist and the best mind in all of the Frugal Mandate's history potentially getting blown up by this crap hole of a pirate station. All right. Paseca is safe, warped out with the emergency FTL, and now we are going to stand here and we are going to watch as our first strike force does its business and tears down this derelict piece of crap that has invaded our space. This is going to be satisfying. Also, I'm really crossing my fingers that we don't get our butts kicked here. Here we go. Volleys of missiles, nuclear missiles, in fact, heading towards our targets. Wonderful. We can see the push and pull of battle right here. Deflector shields down on the vigilance. I believe we may lose the vigilance if things don't improve. Hold tight, Vigilance. Be vigilant, please. And I think the Vigilance will be saved. Yes, indeed. All right, the Vigilance limping away, but there is uh, much reason for celebration here as we have vanquished the base of the Space Pirates. We still don't know if they're going to be back. They may have more up their sleeve, but uh, as we said, when we destroyed their fleet previously, we, they would likely be seen again, and now they have, poking their ugly heads into our space once more. Space pirates. I'm just really more upset that they almost took out Paseca, so uh, we're going to send uh, Paseca over here. Uh, when a, uh, a fleet is destroyed, uh, as we may have seen in a previous episode, uh, they do leave debris very often, so we're going to send... Uh, we're going to send Paseca over here to uh, investigate that, and then uh, then we will ask Paseca to survey the system. Back to the uh, job that we had previously asked of you. And there we go, looking good. Crimson Commando, is this... Oh, that's the wormhole generator. Those bastards. They're using my own technology against me. All right, so let's get rid of that wormhole generator. Perfect, perfect. They thought they were so smart. All right. I, I feel like now I need to do a sweep of my outer rim and make sure that there aren't more of these wormhole generators. I'm hoping that that was the heart of their organization. I, I'm hoping that that station and this wormhole generator it was the base of operations for these pirate bastards, and that we'll be uh, we'll be rid of them, and so we can get back to the uh, get back to the business of making money and hoarding it away in our giant space money bin. Oh, we have oh, so we have two. The, this this message is kind of burying the lead here, uh, so. We have dis discovered a new uh, race of aliens, and we have also uh, invaded their territory. Un in, uh, unintended invasion of their territory. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so our, our research ship is, is heading back to Rixaru uh, because we discovered that these aliens, uh, the Shantar Prime, uh, do in fact lay claim to that system. So let's say interesting because I suppose it's interesting and then it's Birdman hey we're Birdman too we're, we're also Birdman why are you wearing a, a mask are you not native to this planet why do you need a space helmet it's a you do you okay I'm just gonna okay all right we are the nation of Shantar minions of the wise overlord 
the, our aim is to improve ourselves through the use of technology and whether you agree with these goals or not we trust you will remain amicable neighbors so they are uh individualists no we this is us this is us sorry we don't know anything about them just yet uh see so our citizens in the regards uh the way forward lies okay and then of course the the classic uh, uh who am i you i i'm a big deal response which i probably will never use um you know i just i like i, I like being a little bit i, I don't want to the way forward lies in our hands i don't i'm not ready for that i don't think i have the military prowess to back that up so uh let's just uh, let's send our regards my goodness okay let's uh now let's um Let's let this combat resolve, and then we will go take a look at the new map of space as we now know it. Excellent. Okay, so we've, we've, we've analyzed the debris from that uh, piece of crap space station that we destroyed, and uh, we have, we've learned a lot of information here. So in the debris, we learned about red lasers. So if red lasers pops up as our uh, physics research, we will get uh, plus 20% progress. So we'll have a jump start on red lasers. Uh, the same is true for active countermeasures, nano composite materials, uh, and we also get a dump of research, physics, and engineering. So these are gonna be leg ups, basically. L legs up, leg ups, legs ups on the uh, future researches that we can do. So that's great. So that debris actually paying off in spades as we uh, pound that uh, horrible aborted science project into the ground and reclaim our space for our own. So before we get things uh, rolling here and check out the new map, uh, I do want to take a second because I will forget to do this as I have consistently been doing to assign a leader to our first strike force. So the first strike force has now been in two or three battles. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of been the, the guys on the uh, on the, the ships commanding. What well, we want an admiral now to command these guys. We want somebody who can lend their military insights and prowess to the uh, entirety of the first strike force and command them like a true army that uh, would be befitting of the name Frugal. So let's see, we've got uh, Mohammed Salam here. Mohammed Salman. Salman. I, I, I know somebody who pronounces salmon that way. Uh, so I might have to get this no matter what. Uh, so he's going to be aggressive and offer us 20% fire rate, as is uh, Momoka, who's going to also offer us 20% fire rate. And uh, Admiral Jillian is going to offer us a century range plus, plus 25%. That can be nice. Uh, but for a, a military presence, I think I'm going to have to go with fire rate. And uh, we'll, go, we'll go with Solomon because, um, yeah, I, the, the thing about mispr mispronouncing the fish. Yeah. Uh, no, we got, oh, keep that name. No, that was a misclick. Absolutely not. All right. So now we have a commander. We've got uh, Commander Mohammed in charge, and that is excellent. Excellent. So we will continue to add now to the first strike force and uh, turn it into a respectable fighting force. Let's send it back for repairs right now. And now let's take a look at the new universe in which we exist, galaxy in which we exist, with the revelation of our new neighbors. The nation of Shantar. Okay, they don't directly border us just yet, but they are sort of in the direction that we were heading. Uh, not not great, but also not the end of the world. Uh, they do have, uh, you know, uh, that's that would be an early target for us. Uh, that is just outside their borders, just outside their borders. So that could be a good uh, kind of, we'll fight to see who can expand their borders there first, I guess. I think they're going to get it, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Don't ever tell uh, a Chamberlain no. All right, what is this, our construction ship here? Okay, no, this is our, our science ship back on the, uh, back on the hunt, uh, which is just what we need. Right, first strike force is uh, repaired. We do need to re-up our engineering research. Keep missing that. I keep missing it. Okay, so nano composite materials, which again, it's popping off. Paseca, 2%. Yes, Paseca, be careful. Please, please be careful, okay? Please. I The nation right now that could not take a loss like you, okay? Do the research, but carefully. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what do we want Ning to uh, start researching here so this is here when you see the yellow outline uh, as you can read on the tooltip uh, this technology remains here as a valid option every single time going forward 
So uh, you can see we've got that 10% uh, boost already towards this uh, as we earned from uh, research from uh, researching that debris that was left over from that Cracker Jack space station that the pirates uh, slapped together with with glue and popsicle sticks. Um, I don't really think I've I've kind of gone into energy based defense. So nano composite materials not necessarily up my alley right now. Uh, that may be something that I'll want in the future for certain though. Uh, engineering facility, which again uh, is a, a an augment to my standard research facility. So I would take my standard research facility and turn it into a facility that produces more engineering research. Um, not necessarily feeling that right now, so we're, we're going to just kind of stand down on that. Defense platform would be great. It allows me to build a freestanding building, uh, building a, a space station that is equipped with weapons. I can kit it out in the ship creator and uh, it will just defend things that are nearby. So it's a good thing for kind of putting by a frontier outpost or at the edges of your um, at the edges of your settlements, uh, the edges of your borders, where it would be difficult to get a ship there quickly. Though with the wormhole generator technology, it's it's kind of it's negligible the benefit of that. Uh, but in a fight, you know, it would be great. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to lessen the potential impact of the defensive uh, platform. I'm just not going to take it right now because instead I'm going to take the improved spaceport, which is going to get me spaceport level two and Corvette assembly yard, which will make my Corvettes cheaper and faster to build. There we go. It's also going to take quite a while, but what else are we doing? I don't know. So let's get into it. All right. So we need to check in on our situation log and make sure that everything is going cool here. All right. Uh, we want to collect data uh, to reset the space amoebas. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's just, let's find out a little bit more about the space amoebas. Why not? All right, we have a science ship that is idle. So let's fix that. Survey. Survey. And when you are done, survey. Survey. Oh, okay. The final rest. By what has to be... Okay, let's let's start over there. I bit my lip when I was starting to talk. That's embarrassing and painful. By what has to be beyond astronomical odds, the marksman actually managed to pinpoint the source of the odd signals as it soared past the... Uh, through... Soared past through the asteroid belt. That's a odd wording. A tiny alien construct. A simple scan reveals that it is some sort of a ritualistic container holding the remains of an alien spacefarer. Hmm. Let the coffin continue its voyage or open the coffin and study the corpse. Hmm. There is more profit in opening the coffin. Oh, this is the point where I have to test my willingness to RP as the frugal mandate here uh, because uh, the... Every fiber of my being is saying, respect the scary mummy, space mummy tomb and just let it go. And the other part of me is saying, crack open the sarcophagus, legends and curses be damned. Ugh, all right, let's open it up. I feel like a horrible person now, but I am slowly learning what it must feel like to be an actual Chamberlain now. Ah, <sighs> my soul has been tarnished. Evading hostile fleet. L lots of things popping up right here. Okay. We've got research complete. We've got uh, hostile aliens. Let's see. What do we have? Okay. So it uh, appears to just be mining drones. Okay. Mining drones. All right. Not, not a problem. Mining drones. Not a huge problem. Uh, we can dispatch the first strike force to attack the mining drones. Oh, no. Attack the mining drones. Then we'll attack the mining platform. And for, uh, okay, so, right, all is good in science land. Nobody is in, uh, nobody is in direct danger. They will evacuate as they are doing right now. And the first strike force will come in and clean up. So we're going to let this combat resolve. And then I think we're going to, uh, we're going to take a little break, move on and get ready for the next episode. The Space Amoebas, right? The name is stuck. Pronunciation of the proper xenotaxonomic denominator is... You know I would mispronounce it for sure. It's unwieldy for the average uh, Frugal. 
Uh, right, they're solitary animals, okay. Blah, 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 this is amoebas, programmed through liquid, RNA spliced, okay, blah, 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 science, science, science. Uh, there are potential military applications of the uh, graceful patterns of circulation uh, apparent in the flagella's movements. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, flagelling, fl flag Flagellating movement modifier added. Giving the follow effects plus five evasion. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah. So I guess we studied the amoebas. We found a little about a little bit uh, a little bit more about them, and uh, now we are using that to enhance our ability to evade enemy attacks. We have a research that has completed. Uh, improved deflectors. Uh, as I said before, we are kind of going into energy shield technology. So we had been working on improving our deflectors, and now we get to see some more of those uh, research uh, debris research um, uh, rewards. So looking for the word there uh coming to fruition here all right or something's going on back there let me just set this up first uh so we have uh, sentinel point defense these guys would uh they would be mounted on um craft and they would attack slower military vessels okay uh, maybe maybe active countermeasures could be something we want to go into uh red lasers so we are in uh, conventional weapons right now using uh, missiles in our ships but we could start to look into lasers specifically red lasers Focus beams of light uh, cause damage through the generation of intense heat. Nice. Uh, or we could uh, take a look at some of these standard uh, technologies that we sort of drew here. Uh, the physics lab, again, this would augment our basic research building on a planet into a, uh, into a physics research producing building. Yes, I feel like I've said that exact same thing three different times with each of the different resources because I have. So we don't that is definitely something we want to get, but not right now. Yes, so specialized combat computers. So we can unlock basic combat roles. When we go into the ship builder, we can actually put AI modules, or um, I don't know if they're AI modules exactly, but you can put modules into the ships, which will uh, allow them to perform basic roles, like defense or offense, that kind of thing. Uh, that can be really, really useful. Uh, once especially you get into the larger ship types, uh, you can have small corvettes that are zooming in and uh, making quick attacks, and you can have larger ships that are kind of standing their ground and uh, waiting for uh, the uh, the right moment to strike. And then finally, we have uh, fusion power that's going to add um, more energy storage capacity, which is always nice because you can see we're, we're building up there. We're actually getting on up there in energy uh, because we do now have a surplus. Uh, of energy and it will unlock the component fusion reactors for use in uh, our ships uh, and i think that that's great that'll allow me to um, replace my old reactors with these get more uh, energy per uh, slot small medium and large and uh, it just makes ship creation uh, really really more efficient and uh, i'm gonna take it because i know the value and we have more combat oh my god okay so no that that's expected that's we we asked for that combat so let's let this combat resolve, and then we are going to uh, call it quits here for now, and we're going to move on. Oh, are the uh, are the Shantae coming? The Shantar? The Shantae. Great games, though. Shantae, uh, play those Shantae games. They're really great. Uh, but uh, these are not the Shantae's. These are the Shantars. Oh, what do we have here? Establish. Okay. Okay, yeah. So the the Shantar, they're like, okay, we're, we're heading over to help you with this battle, and in the meantime, we're also going to establish an embassy with you. Okay, great. Let's be friends. So they are going to uh, take out the actual mining station while I am busy fighting the hard part. <laughs> so yeah, we'll go over and help them out. Looks like we... Did we lose a ship? We lost a ship. So we'll go over and help them out. Maybe be able to claim some of the spoils. I don't know. Looks like maybe. All right, so let's, uh, let's start to research here. Sneak in here and, and do this research before they can. So, you know, these guys, they're not hostile towards me, and uh, they're not in my territory proper. Uh, so that's why, you know, we're encountering them. Uh, they, we would not encounter them inside the green outline of my territory, but it's it's perfectly normal to encounter them out here in uh, in the, uh, the edges, the unclaimed edges of uh, the galaxy here as we, as we continue both to try to expand and uh, try to better our place in the galaxy. So uh, yeah, a quick check of what's going on in the world, in the galaxy uh, of the Frugal Mandate. Uh, we are expanding, continuing to expand. Things are, are happening. They're, they're, they're popping off like crazy here. Uh, the Shantars are down here, maybe going to be a problem for us. They're kind of 
they're kind of boxing us in in the same way we were sort of talking about maybe boxing in the Zach plot mandate. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of start have to start sneaking around them here to the edge, or, or we'll have to commit to a more uh, galactic northern strategy of expansion, uh, kind of leave these guys down here. Um, they, they seem okay. We might take a look at them diplomatically in the next episode, but uh, these guys seem like they'll be, uh, they won't be immediate threats. They don't seem overtly hostile. They seem like if we leave them alone, they'll leave us alone, and that uh, is kind of what, what I would want out of a neighbor. And they have now established an embassy with us, which is great. So when we come back uh, for the next episode, we will establish an embassy with the nation of Shantar. We will uh, see if the Zach plots value our star maps anymore now that we can tell them, hey, maybe we know about a new alien race that you've never met before. And uh, yeah, and just in general, we'll continue our expansion and uh, we will uh, see about this research stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll answer all these flashing bubbles at the top of our screen. All right. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.